You want to start off by making the parasite first because it needs time to dry. I used liquid latex for this. I used a toothpick to stipple the latex on a flat surface until I have a long thick line. Leave the latex to dry until it turns translucent and use some powder to remove it. The powder is necessary on both sides, otherwise the latex will stick to itself. I made the parasite before I did my makeup, so by the time I actually needed to insert the parasite, it had dried and I could powder it. The shape of this parasite is based on a guinea worm, if you need more reference pictures. I'm applying this makeup on my leg, but most of the reference pictures I used were located on the foot, because that's where the parasite likes to hang out. I combined some red and yellow alcohol paint to create this color I'm using right now. I'm applying it with lots of alcohol and very little paint so that it blends nicely into the skin and it's barely visible. The red lines I'm drawing are based on creeping eruptions, also known as cutaneous larva migrants. This is a hookworm skin infection that causes itching, blisters and raised snake-like tracks in the skin that may spread over time. To add more depth to the lines, I'm adding some light brown and red on some of the areas. Again, I'm trying not to use too much paint. I do have to say that I don't like my alcohol palette at all, so I don't suggest you buy it. It's from the brand Cryolan. I really should invest in a new and better palette, because this was really annoying to work with. I do think you can also achieve this look with regular water paint, just use lots of water and very little color. Um, on the left you can see a red patch that I'm creating. This is where I'll add my blister that has the parasite inside of it. You will be able to see the vein-like texture underneath the blister, so do add some color on your blister area. If you look up some images for creeping eruption or cutaneous lava migrants, you'll see that the skin can be raised on top of the red snake-like tracks. In my first attempt for filming this tutorial, I used latex to create the raised skin. I also tried it with silicon paste, but in the end I didn't like how it looked. I'll insert some examples right here. So I decided to just add a little bit of raised skin and keep it more subtle. I used a product called Scars by Makeup Online, which worked the best for me. You can skip this step and just stick with the vein-like parasite tracks, or just experiment with latex, silicon paste or gelatin for example. So let's make the blister now. I used Artex by Cryolan to create this, which is a silicon paste. Sadly enough, I don't have a cheaper option for you guys besides other brands that sell silicon paste. You cannot create this with latex because you need something that will hold the parasite inside of it and some fluids that we're going to add. The Artex worked really well for this, so I do want to review the silicon paste and two other brands in a future video for you guys. Um, so I just added some of the silicon paste on the red patch that I created and I'm blending out the edges. This is super important, the blister has to hold a lot of volume inside of it so the edges cannot rip. I'm using a small spatula to apply all of this, it's important that you have a 
small one and a giant spatula that just is shit to work with, okay? So here's a tip for you guys. The spatula I'm using is actually from eBay and it was like $1 with free shipping. So if you go to ebay.com and you look for a stainless makeup spatula, you'll see a lot of Chinese stores that sell it with free shipping. It's a great spatula and it's not as expensive as some of these makeup brands, you know. So just for fun, so I decided to add some redness around the blister. I'm adding it in a circular shape around the blister area, leaving the skin the closest to the blister untouched. Uh, you can see these kind of rings in other parasite diseases too, but again, this is optional. So after you're done with all of that, you want to powder it off to set the design and take away the shine. Take a toothpick or needle to make a hole inside your blister. If you don't want to stab yourself, just use a toothpick. I'm pressing the toothpick inside while holding the blister down with my finger. Don't worry, this doesn't hurt, just make sure you don't puncture the edges or all is ruined. Once the toothpick is inside, I wiggle it around to make sure there is some space and I make sure the hole is big enough to fit a syringe. I'm inserting an empty syringe inside the blister to blow some air up in there. Don't blow too much air inside or the thing will explode. You can buy a needleless syringe like this in your pharmacy. They are super cheap here in Belgium, even cheaper than a Chinese spatula from eBay. Oh, and I'm blowing the air inside so that the blister kinda expands. You can probably skip this step if you wiggled your toothpick around a couple of times. Okay, finally you can take your little parasite friend. If you're wondering why mine doesn't look powdery, I covered mine in some skin oil, but you can also use olive oil for example, so that it will slip into the blister very easily. It won't stick to itself and this will help a lot with inserting it. If you shove it in there without the oil, it will take a lot longer. Uh, my parasite also has a red rash going on um, because I used it in a previous attempt and the redness is actually dried blood. So use your toothpick to gently stuff the little guy inside its house. Um, don't keep pushing it in the same area. Change directions every now and then. And in the end, I will leave a small end of the parasite sticking out. After I powdered it off again, I'm taking my syringe filled with pus. This is a fun effect to add. After the pus, I'm adding a bit of blood and then some more pus. If you don't have pus, you can try mayonnaise, I guess. Um, don't add too much blood or it will look too dramatic. And again, don't add too much of these liquids because the thing will explode in your face. Just kidding, it will just rip and look like shit. So we're finally done. The removal technique I'm using here is also based on a guinea worm. This is how they remove it in Africa, by twisting it around a wooden stick and slowly extracting it. 
So overall this look is based on our creeping eruption hookworm parasite and the guinea worm. I spent too much time looking at parasites and I feel there is more to come of this. So I'm gonna go test some new things now and hopefully post a new video soon. If you have any questions, suggestions or requests you can contact me on YouTube, Facebook or Instagram. And remember, wear shoes because this little guy will crawl into your toe and sizzle its way into your skin. Goodbye.